All right, so you want to explore the cosmos, right? Like venture out to those distant stars, maybe even other galaxies. But there's this universal speed limit, you know, the speed of light. It kind of governs everything in the universe. And today we're going to do a deep dive into what that actually means for, well, those dreams of space travel. Yeah, it's super fascinating because a lot of people, they think the speed of light, it's just about how fast photons travel. But it's so much more than that. It's like, uh, the universe's fundamental rule book. You know what I mean? Okay, so elaborate on that a little bit. Why is the speed limit such a big deal? Well, think of it this way. Um, the speed of light, it isn't just about light. It's the ultimate speed limit for everything. Mm -hmm. Information, energy, even cause and effect. Nothing can go faster. So that really throws a wrench into the whole space travel thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Even getting to the nearest star would take, what, years? Decades even. If we could somehow travel at a significant fraction of the speed of light. Exactly. And, and we're just talking about Proxima Centauri here, a measly four light years away. It really puts into perspective just how vast the universe is. Hold on. Light years. Can you back up for a second and explain that for our listener, I mean? Sure. So a light year is the distance that light travels in one year. It's just a way to measure the incredibly vast distances, you know, in space. So when we say Proxima Centauri is four light years away, we mean that the light we see from it today actually left the star four years ago. Wow. So we're literally looking into the past when we observe distant stars. That's incredible. But let's get back to the speed limit. Our sources mentioned Einstein's theory of relativity. What does that have to do with all of this? Einstein's theory, it's crucial here because it completely changed our understanding of space and time. Before relativity, we thought they were like separate, absolute things. But Einstein showed that they're actually intertwined in this uh, mind-bending concept called space-time. Okay, I've heard of space-time, but I'll admit it's always sounded kind of vague and mysterious to me. Can you break it down a bit further? Imagine space-time like a giant four-dimensional fabric. Instead of just three dimensions of space, like uh, up, down, left, right, forward, backward, you also have time as a fourth dimension. Every event in the universe, it has a specific location on this fabric, not just in space, but also in time. So instead of just coordinates on a map, you're talking about coordinates that also pinpoint a moment in time? Exactly. It's like a 4D map of the universe. Yeah. Now, here's where the speed of light comes in. It essentially defines the um, tightness, I guess you can say, of this space-time fabric, dictating how much space and time get stretched for objects moving at high speeds. Okay, I'm trying to picture this. So if you're moving really fast, closer to the speed of light, space-time itself gets distorted around you. You got it. And that leads to some pretty wild consequences like time dilation. Time dilation. All right, that's where my brain starts to melt a little. So yeah. if time itself is being distorted, what does that actually mean for someone traveling at these incredible speeds? Imagine uh, you're on a spaceship, right? Yeah. Traveling at nearly the speed of light towards Proxima Centauri. Relativity says that time on your ship would actually slow down relative to time back here on Earth. Wait, slow down. So you're telling me if I was on that spaceship, I would age slower than everyone back on Earth. That's exactly what relativity predicts. Uh. And it's not just your perception either. Time itself would literally be passing slower for you in your reference frame compared to someone who's, well, stationary. It's been experimentally proven too. So I could travel for what feels like a few years to me, but when I get back to Earth, decades could have passed. That's insane. Is time travel a possibility then? Well, it's not quite that simple. It's more like you're taking a shortcut through time, not actually traveling back and forth. But it does mean that interstellar travel might not feel as long for the traveler as it does for the people left behind. This is mind boggling. So we have this cosmic speed limit tied to this crazy concept of space time. It's making me rethink everything I thought I knew about space and time. But what does this all mean for our chances of actually exploring the universe. That's where we start running into the real challenges of space travel. Even if we could approach a fraction of the speed of light, which is a huge engineering feat in itself, the distances involved are just staggering. And, and we haven't even touched on the practicalities of, you know, fuel, resources, the hazards of interstellar space. So it's not just about reaching those speeds. It's about surviving the journey, right? Our sources did mention some potential solutions, though, like generational ships where multiple generations live and die on the ship before reaching the destination, or even cryogenic sleep, where travelers are essentially frozen in time. Those are some of the ideas being explored. But let's be honest, they all come with their own set of ethical and logistical challenges. It really makes you wonder if there's any way around this speed limit. 
I mean, our sources also mentioned concepts like warp drives, didn't they? Things that sound straight out of science fiction. They did. And that's where things get really interesting. Because maybe, just maybe, there are ways to circumvent the speed of light without actually breaking it. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more about these potential loopholes. All right, so you're probably <laughs> thinking warp drives. That's pure science fiction, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. One of those fundamental principles in physics, it's causality. The idea that like cause has to come before effect. Cause and effect, yeah, that, that makes sense. But how does that tie into faster than light travel? Okay, so imagine you could travel faster than light. You could theoretically send information back in time. What if you can send a message that arrived before it was sent? Hold on, wouldn't that create all sorts of paradoxes? What if you sent a message back in time to stop yourself from sending the message in the first place? Like, could you prevent your own birth? That's the, uh, that's the classic grandfather paradox. And it's a major reason why physicists think that traveling faster than light through space, you know, might be fundamentally impossible. It just, it messes with the whole fabric of reality, the idea that causes have to lead to effects. So no zipping around the galaxy like in Star Wars then. That's a bit of a bummer. But, you know, our sources did mention warp drive, so maybe there's a loophole here somewhere. There might be. Remember we were talking about how the speed of light is a limit for anything moving through space-time? But what if, what if you could manipulate space-time itself? That's the whole idea behind a warp drive. Manipulating space-time. Okay, now you've really lost me. How could you possibly do that? Okay, picture this. You create a warp bubble around your spaceship, right? You compress space-time in front of the bubble and you expand it behind. Essentially, you're warping the fabric of space itself. So instead of moving faster than light through space, you're sort of warping the space around you to make the distance shorter. It's like like cheating the system. That's a that's a great analogy. You're not exceeding the speed of light within your like local bubble of space-time. You're manipulating the fabric of space itself. And theoretically, this wouldn't violate causality since you're not actually sending information backward in time within your reference frame. Okay. That's starting to make a little more sense. Right. But how realistic is any of this? It still sounds pretty far-fetched. It's definitely highly speculative. Like, the amount of energy required to warp space-time like that would be astronomical, literally. We're talking about controlling gravity on a scale we can barely even comprehend. So warp drives are still a long shot, but even if they're just a theoretical possibility, it's still amazing to think about. It really shows you how much we still don't know about the universe. It really does. This, this deep dive into the speed of light, it's been incredible. It's made me realize how much we take for granted about the universe and how many, how many mind-blowing mysteries are still out there. Totally. And even if we never achieve warp speed, this exploration has helped me understand how fundamentally the speed of light, it just shapes our reality. Yeah. What's fascinating is that this, this seemingly simple concept, it has such profound implications. It affects how we understand everything from the size of the universe to the nature of time itself. Absolutely. Before we get too lost in the cosmos, though, there was one more point our sources touched on that I wanted to explore. They, they talked about the speed of light, not just as a limit, but as a key to understanding the universe. What, what do they mean by that? So how is the speed of light a key to understanding the universe? It feels like it's mostly been a giant roadblock so far. Well, think of it this way. The speed of light, it's kind of like a universal yardstick, you know? It helps us measure and understand the cosmos in ways we couldn't otherwise. Okay, give me an example. How does knowing the speed of light help us measure the universe? Well, for starters, it helps us define the size of the observable universe. We can only see as far as light has had time to travel to us since the Big Bang. So there are parts of the universe that we can't even see because the light hasn't reached us yet. Exactly. The speed of light, it creates a kind of cosmic horizon you know, uh -huh. beyond which we just, we can't see. And and the further we look out into space, the further back in time we're actually seeing. Whoa, so it's like literally looking into the past. Precisely. Because that light, you know, from those distant galaxies, it's taken billions of years to reach us. And by studying the properties of that light, we can learn about, like, what the universe was like billions of years ago. It's like having a time machine. That's incredible. I never thought of it that way. But how does this help us understand the universe today? I mean, right now. It helps us understand how the universe has evolved over time. By studying that light from distant objects, we can learn about the formation of stars and galaxies, uh, the distribution of matter, and even the nature of dark energy. It's like, uh, like piecing together this giant 
cosmic puzzle. You know? So the speed of light isn't just about how fast light travels. It's also about how that speed connects everything in the universe. It's like a cosmic thread that weaves through everything. Exactly. And, and here's another example you might find interesting. Our understanding of the speed of light, it actually led to the development of technologies like GPS. Wait, what does GPS have to do with the speed of light? With GPS, it relies on extremely precise time measurements from satellites orbiting Earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And because those satellites are moving at high speeds relative to us here on the ground, we have to account for the effects of time dilation predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. So without understanding the speed of light and its effects on time, our GPS systems wouldn't be accurate. Not nearly as accurate, no. The differences would be significant enough to throw off navigation by miles. Wow, I had no idea. It's amazing how much our everyday technology relies on these fundamental concepts. Makes you appreciate the power of scientific discovery, doesn't it? It really does. And it highlights the importance of continuing to explore these seemingly abstract concepts. Even if they don't lead to immediate practical applications, they can revolutionize our understanding of the universe and, and our place within it. This has been an absolutely mind-blowing deep dive. We've covered so much ground, from Einstein's theories to the challenges of space travel to to even the potential for bending the rules of space-time. I feel like I've learned so much. You too. And, and we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore, so many unanswered questions. Well, you've certainly given our listener a lot to think about. But before we wrap up, is there one final thought, something to kind of leave them pondering? Here's a question to consider. We've talked about the speed of light as a limit, but is it truly an insurmountable barrier? Or will we find ways to circumvent it? You know, maybe by harnessing the power of exotic matter or discovering new physics beyond our current understanding. If the universe is full of surprises and history has shown us it is, then maybe, just maybe, the speed of light isn't the final word on cosmic travel. What do you think? That's a great question to leave our listener with. The speed of light, it's a limit, a key, and maybe even a challenge. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time.